Welcome to We Need to Talk, where we try to figure out the meaning of life and how to reduce dissatisfaction. In this episode, we are reflecting on whether the endeavors we choose in life are actually an attempt to cover up our insecurities. For example, Nick and I have given a lot of workshops on leadership and self-development and public speaking, and maybe that has actually been an attempt to run away from actually confronting our own selves our own insecurities and sort of mask it as if we're, uh, we are developed individuals and people who are good leaders, for example. We also discuss how masculinity is in, in some sense insecure within a lot of men. For example, myself, there are some aspects of my masculinity which I'm insecure about. I talk about those and finally how there are not many groups in society that give room to to give space to speak about masculinity in a healthy, open way. So enjoy the episode and don't forget to subscribe. Let's go. Yeah. Now, one thing where I really quickly put my lights on. One thing we need to discuss here, though, what, what's been coming to my... <laughs> <laughs> don't look there, mate. <laughs> what came to my mind is, what if the thing guiding us is actually insecurity and ego well, i could see ego but how do you mean insecurity well the things it, like how do you distinguish between a call to an adventure that comes from your your hero or a call to something that is supposed to protect your ego is supposed to protect your insecurities like you're drawn into something that will protect you from facing your insecurities or you know Oh, I think we discussed this. That is a very good argument. Um, but I think that to me, that only applies because the association is around self-development. So if I would give workshops about this, I am working on something externally outside of myself, whilst actually I could also use the exact same content to focus more on myself. So if it would have been something else, like another adventure really outside of the realm of self-development in that case it might not have been as true but i've had this discussion whether the with myself whether the whole adventure i've been on with extraordinary life is indeed just a way of not having to confront myself because to the outside world if i portray this i seem like i've figured it out for myself even though i know i haven't i mean i'm not perfect in that sense uh yeah i biked a lot on that thought <laughs> <laughs> thanks for opening up about that yeah i think i'm very similar i've questioned whether this whole identity of being proficient in self-development in giving self-development mm -hmm. workshops is a is a facade to to make me think that i have actually developed myself and i have confronted my darkness when actually maybe i haven't yeah but i think that's an ongoing thought for the time being because that might definitely be an insecurity because the thing is like who are we to lecture these others like uh i don't know if that disappears with more experience more knowledge or age like i just don't know that's something to figure out at the same time i i do see how people really first of all admire respect it which is like that that tells me like something is right and I also do it out of genuine intentions. And the fact that at least we're conscious of this potential dichotomy or potential distressing situation, that's at least the first step. Because I've only realized that like three months ago or two months ago. Yeah, mm. Mm. yeah that, that's a good point. I mean, the, the awareness of that potential, I think is the first step to figuring out you know if it's the case or not so i think it is we can give ourselves a pat on the shoulder <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i mean uh, one thing i think for my i just i'm just gonna open up a little bit here uh i think i've figured out a little bit of the motivation to understand life build myself intellectually and sort of be able to guide others is actually a an attempt to compensate for my insecure masculinity. So 
I'm not going to go into the reason today why my ins- masculinity is sometimes insecure, but I think if I can prop myself up intellectually, like with the rational, the logos, you know, the logic, the the sort of the wisdom, then I am sort of a a guiding figure, like an authority figure, a figure of authority, and I'm like that is where I can outdo others that is that is my realm where I can I am stronger than others so I need to kind of find my my the discipline that I can dominate I could dominate others <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but like, like on a serious note, do you feel like that is uh, specializing in balancing those like um, logos, whatever, masculine, or or whether it's like compromising? What do you mean? Like, is it? Do you think it's you do this out of a lack of like potential masculinity, or because of the strength you already have in logos? Like, you want to work on that, or is it you just don't want to face the lack? No, I mean, I honestly don't think I actually, I mean, this sounds weird when I say this now, but I don't think I lack masculinity necessarily. I think, I think the biceps could be bigger, but <laughs> I think my, I think I could, I would like to be physically bigger because, you know, all guys or most guys want to be buff, you know, but I'm naturally more lean, let's say that's one thing, but like personality wise, I don't think I, I could be more assertive probably, but I'm practicing on, I'm like working on that. But otherwise I think my masculinity is fine, but I still deep down, I'm insecure about it still. And I, I don't, there's something that I can tell myself I'm masculine, but mm. there's something else within me that's triggering the insecurity. And that needs to be, it needs to be fixed at that level of that, that core where it's coming from. So, yeah, but this, I mean, I do think I am, somehow I am intrinsically motivated, authentically intrinsically motivated to learn about life and figure it out and build myself intellectually. Uh, Cause it just makes me super happy when I learn something new, like about psychology or wisdom or human life. But yeah. Do, do you want to dive like genuinely into masculinity? Cause I would have a question. Let's do it. <laughs> um, to what extent do you think it's related to external uh, validation? Like, for example, a girl validating your masculinity. Do you think that would be a facade or really helping to reinforce? It for sure has to do with I'm insecure about being judged as emasculine. That's the fear. It's not really. But by whom? Like by other men or by. Yes, things? by other men. Oh. So I talked about this with somebody actually. And it seems to be that, and this is this is actually really cool. Masculinity is a measurement of your ability to compete against other men. It's yes. not necessarily how well you engage with women. It's only half the half the 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 game. Like first, you need to compete against men, and then you need to be able to actually apply yourself to the needs and desires and the lifestyle of a of a woman now i don't really feel like the, the the thing with girls like i feel like i can attract girls i don't really feel insecure like that but what does make me insecure if there's somebody if there's a man who's more powerful than me who's more yeah honestly wealthy than me who's more who's more sophisticated than me, who's more dominant me, than me. That makes me insecure, yeah. Well, that's a good science, though. Good to know that, that distinction between uh, yeah. being admired or being men amongst men. Hmm. Have you read the book by Jack Donovan? You really should. The Life of the su- Superior Man? Yeah, I think that one. No, I, I haven't. I think oh, I gave it to you for a bit. I think no. Okay, it's really good. It talks exactly about this um, being a man amongst men. It's, okay, we should I mean, do a I, discussion I down- on that sometime. It's very cool. Okay, I'll look at. I downloaded the PDF. Ooh, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I bought the PDF, of course, <laughs> <laughs> and then I downloaded it. <laughs> uh, awesome. 
Oh, yeah, I'll just write it down as a note so I remember. Yeah, I've heard it's a good book, but I, I never like looked into it properly. But yeah, I do, I do, are you insecure about your masculinity? Mm, well, the situation you just portrayed when another guy's like more assertive or more confident in himself. I've noticed that like last weekend we went, uh, I organized a weekend for me and my friends. And there was like one guy and uh, I mean, he, I'm not going to name him, but he's from uh, russia and he is i don't think he has siblings and he's raised by his father so that's a way more masculine culture i think and i can really see that and i did admire most parts of it like his way of delegating things and assertiveness was like next level and his way of negotiating and the fact that he spoke many languages i was like really impressed by him but I do feel grounded enough in myself to not feel insecure by that. But I think for me, it is, it has more to do with being able to provide value uh, to, to females. I think that is essentially what, whether I like it or not, that does bring me a higher level of confidence. If I know that I am of value to women, I know I'm doing something good. If it's the women that I admire as well, then it's like, okay, I feel like I'm on the right track and that it doesn't reinforce, but it increases my uh, confidence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say the validation by the, by women is probably the stronger validation than just being validated by other men. I would think it just instinctively gets you going more, yeah. I would say. But yeah, it is it very is. cool. It is cool to be amongst men and then being looked up to whilst there's no women. That is a different situation. I think we're just, because we're on university, uh, we were, you're not very often in a situation with only guys. And I think that that is perfectly what, uh, described in the book as well. And it's, it's just a lack of situation we have. And it's very cool to experience being respected amongst a group of men. And I don't mean boys, like really like guys that respect themselves and have like some sort of noble values. Mm. God, I don't know if I, have I ever been around a group or like that? I know. <laughs> like we don't, it's sad. I like, I want to create that here too. That'll be really cool. Mm. I mean, you're in the, I thought you were like the, the dating group that is only men, right? You we go to bisexual saunas <laughs> no. <laughs> no 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 i'm just kidding um it's 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 called the gentleman's group it's a bunch of guys in frankfurt who what you meet up to talk about masculinity and show empathy or just talk about what it's like to be a guy that's what it's about yeah but i haven't spent enough time with them and they're all they're quite they're different uh Eight, uh, ages like the, the bandwidth is there they're, they're like i'd say between 30 and maybe 63 65 years old so that they are older than me yeah um, and i haven't spent enough time with them and they're yeah yeah we should do a whole topic on this like healthy versus masculine toxicity and like a new outlet for men to be men in a like in a uh, constructive way because I feel like it isn't there. Like the only groups of men I knew was on, on uni is just sports and associations. And I mean like fraternities. And that's like only drinking and to me more destructive behavior and pretty violent, well not violent, like disrespectful towards women. And then I mean, sports is just sports and drinking as well. So mm -hmm. there's no really other outlet for men to be men outside of that. That's in uni, like in, in working life, there's none probably. Yeah, if you'd, if what one would have had a hope to find, like if you'd find some sort of open spaces, it would have been at university. But if it's not yes. there, you probably won't find it anywhere else. Yet, I do think there is a growing unconscious demand for men to be men. Like it's, it's toiling within guys. And if you find mm -hmm. a space, people will gravitate towards it. I, I, I suspect yet yeah. it, it, it's actually quite difficult for me to relate because I literally don't hang out really with guys who, yeah. who can't open up or I don't know if I'm just 
Although maybe I do some, but I, there are so many guys who are, I can talk about openly with and, and from like from this gentleman's group, I just talk with a guy for two hours on Sunday and just a solid conversation. He's like 37. He gave me really excellent and lot advice on how to deal with my masculine like insecurity of masculinity mm. and just like really genuine down to earth and open and it was just solid it was really really valuable yet i i, I don't know if like do people do guys never have these talks because i'm 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 not i don't mm. know like because mm. uh, i just live a different kind of life. i live my own life i don't know if i think it's quite unrepresentative i have an inkling like i suspect 